Beginning now to understand why it's so important to study what we're studying on the blessing of the Lord. Because it was the first thing that God ever said to the first human being that ever was. So it had to be the most important thing that could possibly be said to any human. It was the first thing the human being here ever heard. And he blessed them saying, be fruitful, multiply, resupply the earth, subdue it, have dominion over it. Amen. Now, when you put first things first, you begin to see it in places in the scripture that you never noticed it before. Now you know why David, <laughs> who understood it and understood what it meant to him as a soldier, as a king, and as a prophet. And so he practiced it all the time. That's the reason he would sing, bless the Lord, O my soul. You see, do you hear? He's talking to his soul. <laughs> he wasn't talking to God. He's talking to his soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless his holy name. All that is within me, bless the Lord. What's he doing? He's practicing. He is exercising his God-given anointing to bless. He's the seed of Abraham, and God said, I will bless you, and I will make you a blessing, giving him the authority to bless. Not just in giving goods to someone, but to turn and bless them so that that same blessing power is now functioning in them. And we, as the body of translated, the body of the anointing of Jesus. My goodness, that's what we're in the earth to do, is to bless. We cause people to prosper. We cause people to increase and be fruitful. Well, now then you begin to see it all through the scripture and other places where you had just read past it, you know, where Jesus said, these are those sown among thorns, such as hear the word and receive it. But the deceitfulness of riches, not riches, the deceitfulness of riches. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. But the deceitfulness of riches the, will create the love of money and turn money into being a God. So the deceitfulness of riches and the lust or the pressure of other things entering in, now listen, choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Ah, all of a sudden, blessing is staring you right in the face again. Be fruitful and multiply. Mm -hmm. So now we see that the Word is what's bearing the fruit. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, that's good information. Amen. 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 So, uh, Daryl, you remember Brother Hagin used to say, go on a bug hunt. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, he, and he would say, then he'd say, what do I mean by that? He said, when I was a little boy, we'd go bug hunting. And he said, you look under every leaf and under every little stick and you, you, you find all kinds of bugs crawling around under there. He said, look under every leaf. Look under every stick. Look everywhere you walk. Look everywhere you go. Go blessing hunting. Amen. Amen. Look for it in the scriptures. How does it refer to it? How does it reference to it? Start a cross-reference in your Bible. Every time you see fruitful, cross it and reference it to the blessing. Every time you see multiply, cross-reference it to the blessing. You ain't never had a good time until you get to digging in this blessing. <laughs> this, my dear one, is what you were born to do. 
and your spirit comes alive. When my son John was just a little boy, he got a little puppy, and this thing was a golden retriever. Now, this little old dog was just barely big enough to walk, but you could throw something across the room, and he'd go get it. He don't know why he go get it. He don't know what to do with it when he got it, but he go get it. Because that's what he was born to do. And he did go get it, try to get it. I don't care if he rolled a baseball bat across the floor, he'd try to put it in his mouth. See, it, it was just in him to do that. It is in you to bless. It is just in you to act like God. It is in you to act like Jesus. It is in you to speak forth the power and the words of faith and the words of blessing. It is in you. It is in your spiritual born again DNA. Hallelujah. And the more you get in it, <laughs> the better you like it. And you begin to say something, soul, bless the Lord and forget not all his benefits. Oh, now he's talking about all the stuff that the blessing is there to do, and it's my benefit. You'll get to where you forget about petitioning the union for your benefits. You get to where you don't think about them no more. You, all you think about is how can I bless them? How can, how can I bless those guys? They need to know this, man. You know, the words of the union is the boss giveth and the boss taketh away. And religious people say, God giveth and God taketh away. And ain't neither one of them right. <laughs> it's true that that was said in the Bible, but the man that said it was wrong. And God corrected him for it. So you ain't got no right to preach it at funerals. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but you, you get to where you're looking for that blessing so you can bless somebody. Amen. You, you just know the answer's in you. You just know it's in there all the time. Forget not all of his benefits. Who takes sickness and disease from the midst of me. Glory to God. Forget not all of his benefits. Who renews my youth like the eagles. Praise God. Now there's a meal prayer for you. Amen. 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 Instead of bless this, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, who renews my youth like the eagles. Amen. Yeah, you can feed on that. Amen. Amen. Yeah, can you see the picture? That's what God intended for his people to spend their life doing. To the point where Jesus has to come on the scene to fulfill all the stuff your faith got stirred up. Amen. 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 He that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loves me, Jesus said, and my Father will love him, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. John 14, 21, and I'm telling you what, it's the truth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now then, let's Go back once more to 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, and let's read our foundation scripture that we read last night. Second Corinthians, let's read the ninth verse of the eighth chapter. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, Yet for your sake, he became poor. Always read that with this in mind. Yet for my sake, he became just as poor as I was, that through his poverty, I might be as rich as he is. That's what the whole thing was about, was to get us back up on his level. All right. Then we read in the ninth chapter, verse 8, God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. 
Now, God is able to make all grace. That means it, it literally, it can be literally translated like this. God is willing to make all grace, all of it, all grace abound towards you so that you always having all sufficiency in all things, Amen. you may abound. Say, yeah, but I don't deserve that grace. Well, what do you think grace is? <laughs> That's what grace is all about, is getting the best without deserving it. Amen. I mean, come on, man. If you've got any grace at all, let me tell you something. Did you accept the, the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross? Did you accept that? Raise your hand if you did. All right. Did God accept it? Yeah. He accepted it before you did. But since he accepted the sacrifice of Jesus, since he accepted the resurrection of Jesus, then he had to accept you. Consequently, he is obligated by his own word by his own decision and by his own action in the blood of Jesus to accept you and me and treat us as if sin never existed. Why? Because he accepted the sacrifice of Jesus for all sin. Forgive me if I get to hollering at you. I could help it, but I ain't going to. <laughs> oh, I got a shout in my soul tonight. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, let me get back over there where I was. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work as, now what does that mean? As it is written. You could, he's using the scripture. He's going to tell us here the scripture that he based this statement on. And God's no respecter of persons. You means me Amen. when I read this. This book is God speaking to me. If it belonged to anybody, it belonged to me. Amen. God is able to make all grace bound toward you, toward me. Let me put it in the first person so I can illustrate here. God is able to make all grace abound toward me that I, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, he, me, have dispersed abroad. He, me, hath given to the poor. His, my, righteousness remaineth forever. See, he was referring to me when he's talking about the grace. And then he let me know what scripture he was standing on when he referred to me. So let's go over there to the 112th Psalm and let's find out some more about us. <laughs> Amen. Psalm 112. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man... Now we start right there by saying, praise God, this man is me. I'm blessed. This man is me. That feareth, that highly honors and reverences the Lord. To highly reverence the Lord is to put what he says, what he commands, first place in your life. Not what you think about it, or not pick and choose what commandments you want to keep and what one you don't, 
or try to excuse yourself out of that commandment like Jesus was talking about. Well, when you do, you destroy the promise on that commandment because your tradition hasn't got any promise to it. The only thing it promises is that the Word don't work. It'll promise you that. So, that's me. If it isn't, see, remember how we started this last night? This is a profile, a concisely presented sketch of the life and character of a believer. It's a picture, Bible picture of what God calls a prosperous believer. So now when you read that, blessed is the man that highly reverences and honors the Lord. Now, if you can't get past that, deal with it. Don't go any further because this is talking about you. You're the one that has said he's able to make all grace abound towards you. Verse two, we're finally there. Now, I've dealt with myself to reverently honor the Lord and to delight greatly in his commandments. I am yours to command, sir, because I know any command he gives me is to press me into the place where the blessing has been released in my behalf. I'm never going to a worse place. Now, the conditions there may be horrible, but the more horrible they are, the more the blessing of the Lord will function in me to change it. I'm not going there to become horrible like the situation. I'm not going there to get into poverty like the poverty folks that I'm going to have, have to preach to. And I've had missionaries to tell me, Brother Copeland, th these two people are too poor. You can't preach that hundredfold return to them. There's something wrong with that. It's like telling me now, now Copeland, uh, don't, don't, don't preach the blood of Jesus in this prison. You know, this, this place is full of criminals. <laughs> you, can, you, you can't preach salvation here. You need to preach that at church. <laughs> now, now, Brother Copeland, I understand you believe in healing and all that, but now don't be preaching that in this hospital. These people are too sick to hear that. <laughs> That's how ridiculously stupid that is. That's right. That's right. And the reason it's stupid, because it's human without God. So now once you've dealt with yourself, as you read this profile and you begin to alter your way of thinking, your way of acting, your way of speaking to fit the profile. Because God's no respecter of persons. That's the reason he put this in the Word. Amen. Amen. So now, his seed shall be mighty upon earth. Wow. Isn't that something? His seed shall be mighty on earth. This is not just speaking about my children and my offspring. This is talking about every seed I sow, including my children. Everything I sow is blessed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. <laughs> I tell you what, if you could, you just ought to sometimes just get around our family. This is the happiest bunch you ever saw in your life. All our children laugh all the time. I'm talking about the little ones, the little great grandchildren, and one brand new grandchild. It'll be a year old in January. Killies new baby, Emily. Uh, they all smile all the time. <laughs> you know why? They've been being called blessed ever since their mothers found out there was a baby in the womb. That child's daddy has blessed them every day, Talk to them about the Word. They play the Word for them to go to sleep by and preach to them when they're awake and tell them how much Daddy loves them. And you are the seed of Abraham, boy. Glory to God. All things are possible unto you because you're with God all your life. His promises are yes and amen. So what do you do? 
Your, 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 your baby comes in there asking you for something, and sure enough, you don't have the money at the time to, to buy it. You don't just jump on no like it was holy and sacred. After all, baby, you know, daddy has to be a good steward of God's money. In other words, we're going to spend it on us before we do you. <laughs> now, already it's God's fault because she don't get a bicycle. So what do you do? Well, I had to learn this from the Lord. But I spent some time praying about it to find out because I had my heart and mind made up. My children were going to be raised on the blessing of the Lord and walk in faith all the days of their life. Amen. And here's what the Lord taught me. They came in one day and uh, Kelly came in and said, Daddy, I need a new bicycle. She said, my little bicycle, I love my little bicycle and all that. But she said, Daddy, I mean, I just pedal my brains out and everybody runs off and leaves me. I said, no, now you ain't pedaling your brains out, so quit <laughs> talking like that. <laughs> oh, she said, oh, yes, sir. I just pedal as hard as I can. I said, well, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a laugh over that. I said, now this bicycle you want, you got a picture of it? Yeah. So she went in and got the picture and brought it out there. She had this little catalog and she opened it up and here's the bicycle. I said, is that the best one they got? Uh, no. I said, well, what are we doing believing for this? Where's the, where the best one is? Well, that's the best one. Daddy. That's over a thousand dollars. I said, what difference does that make? We just dreaming and bleeding. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you don't have to be a lightning fast mind to grab a hold of it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. She and her eyes lit up. So I said, let's pray. Oh, we prayed over that bicycle, man. Forget that $200 rag. Man, we, you know, we're going for the top. And we prayed and we believe God. I'm telling you what, them kids believe God with you. But we got to pray and I said, now you know what you had to do, don't you? Uh, yes, sir. I said, what? Uh, I have to sow a seed. I said, that's right. That's the way we receive everything we have. Man. Yes, sir. I said, now, are you believing for the best bicycle they got? Yeah. You can't go back there and get some old junky seed now. Oh, okay. And her eyes lit up. She said, oh, I know what it is. And out the room she went. Well, she's headed for that toy box. Now, mama, let me tell you something. Don't get all stutter and back off when you see that child come in the room with the toy you stood in line for four hours to get. <laughs> And start saying, well, now, baby, we need to use a little wisdom on that. <laughs> no, we ain't giving your doll. We're giving her doll. She went and got the best thing she had. They'll do it every time. Unless you teach them. No, you don't, you don't need to do that, baby. And you got something in there. Well, they go get some old ragged something. Just like them old ragged clothes you've been giving to the Goodwill. Instead of going and buying some new clothes and taking it down there and giving it to the Goodwill. Anyway, man, she knew just exactly where that doll's going. Hadn't already knew in her heart who she's going to select. And did it. And I'm telling you, you better go sweep a spot out in that garage because there's a bicycle headed on down and it's coming quick. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. The Branson Victory Campaign, March 8th through the 10th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. Living Victory West Coast Faith Encounter, Anaheim, California, April 6th and 7th with Kenneth Copeland and Dr. Stephen and Kelly Swisher. Celebrate 30 years in Europe at the Europe Victory Campaign, May 10th through 12th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Excel Center in London, UK. 
As many of you know, every Friday on the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast is Offering Day. That's the instruction of the Lord to my grandfather, Brother Kenneth Copeland, some years ago. They've been faithful to do that. And really all it is, is giving you an opportunity. You go before the Lord and you inquire of Him. That's what we've been learning about on these broadcasts. And you simply say, Father, would you have me get involved with Kenneth and Gloria? Is there something, is there a part for me to play in what they're doing all over the world? And if He gives you instruction, just follow it. But if he doesn't, you just hold on to it and you find out where else he's got you assigned to be a partner with somebody. But partner with somebody in a kingdom endeavor. Let me read this to you out of the book of Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. It says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. It says, whatever a man sows. And that would include your money. That would include your finances. And once again, just go before the Lord. Father, what would you have me do? But when you sow into this ministry and you sow into ministries like it who are out preaching the word of God, you are sowing spiritually. You are sowing into the kingdom of God. And as far as we're concerned, we have nothing but thank you to say to all of you, our partners, the ones of you who have plugged into this thing with us and you've been such a help and we praise God for you and we thank him for you every single day. Now look, to review these broadcasts, these things that you've been listening to, just go to kcm.org. You can listen to them over and over and over and continue to learn how to receive the benefits that come from getting the Word of God into your life, the benefits of walking in the blessing. Listen to it over and over. You're going to hear things that fourth and fifth time. You didn't hear the first and second time that you listened to it. Let it get down on the inside of you and let it produce and do what only the Word of God can do. And you just open up your heart and you say, Lord, just wash over me with your word. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now look, let me invite you right now to join Gloria Copeland, my grandmother, next week on the broadcast because her guest is none other than my dad, Pastor George Pearsons. And they're going to spend 10 more days looking at 10 days of kingdom prosperity. So many of you have already been blessed by the broadcast that they've done. Get back into it. Plug back into it because this is your time for victory. Amen. This is Jeremy Pearsons reminding you, God loves you and we love you. And Jesus is Lord. Thanks for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory. For this week's broadcasts on DVD or CD, today's product offer, or for more information on KCM, visit kcm.org. Online, you'll find free ministry resources to help you live every day in faith. Receive God's promise that everything is going to be all right.